Hey what's up everyone, Michael here. I'm going to be scaping this 45 gallon or 170 liter aquarium today. It's a used tank which came with this really cool chunk of wood that's actually stuck in place. I start by pouring in the substrate and smoothing it out, sloping it up towards the back. That helps to create a sense of depth with different layers in the tank where I can put foreground, midground, and background plants. I like using planted aquarium soil. It's usually made of clay or some sort of volcanic material. Either way it's packed with a ton of good nutrients that the plants will use to grow. Another advantage to using this sort of substrate is that it's very porous and beneficial bacteria will colonize it, creating a more stable environment in the long run. I'm not really brand loyal as far as planted soil goes. This tank came with some UNS soil and I topped it off with Landon. As I'm laying the rocks out, I'm thinking about making it look as natural as possible, placing the rocks as if wood has been growing around it for centuries. The best way to keep wood from floating is to glue it to the rocks using silicone if you have time, but that takes 24 hours to cure or for a 60 second fix you can use paper towels and super glue. Wedge some paper towels or cotton balls between the wood and rocks at a contact point. Then douse it down in liquid super glue. You'll actually be able to see a little bit of steam coming out of the paper towel after you put glue on it, which is a sign that the chemical reaction has taken place. I usually wait another 30 seconds or so to be safe. If you tap on the paper towel, you'll notice that it's gone rock solid and is holding the wood in place. I use this method to add a little bit of length to the main chunk of wood as well as some fine detail with pine and fir roots. It doesn't make sense to add a lot of detail to areas where I'm planning on planting heavily because they'll just get overgrown. Eventually a lot of these roots will seamlessly blend in with the plants growing around them. After I'm content with the level of detailing, it's time to start planting. Planting is a pretty straightforward process. Grasp the plants at the base of the roots and stick them under the soil. I like to use planting forceps for most plants, but for the really large ones, it's easier to just do barehanded. Along the back here, we have Altanthera rosenberg, Cryptocorine pechii, and Cryptocorine pink flamingo. African water fern is what's called an epiphyte, meaning it grows on other plants or objects rather than in the soil. The main stem that all the leaves come out of is called a rhizome, and it needs to have access to oxygen and flowing water, which is why these plants cannot be placed in the substrate. That's also the reason that most epiphytes do well with at least moderate amounts of flow. I'm just using some liquid super glue to keep this fern in place, though gel super glue would actually have been preferred. I'm planting a new species to me, Starogyne portovelho, and it looks pretty similar to the common Starogyne repens, but with longer, more narrow leaves and a little less stout overall. I poured a little bit of water at the bottom because that's how I like to plant. I'm going with my Cranthemum Monte Carlo for the carpet. It's one of my favorite plants that I end up using in a lot of my scapes. The best tip I can give you for planting Monte Carlo is to really plant it deep in the substrate. That's true for many carpeting plants, but especially so for Monte Carlo. Even if a good chunk is buried, it'll quickly sprout new heads. If they don't get pushed in deep enough, they'll likely end up floating to the surface. It's important to spray plants down every now and then as they start to dry out, especially if the planting process takes a while. Java fern windelov will be one of the largest, bushiest plants in this tank. They're going to really help green up this chunk of wood. Hygrophila pinatifida along the top will also fill in really thick and it will help to protect the top of the wood from getting coated in algae since it's so close to the light. Phoenix moss or Fissidens fontanus will really help to give this gnarled root a sense of maturity. 
Mosses in general are a great way to add an old growth vibe to any aquarium. I'm using liquid super glue to keep a lot of this moss and epiphytes in place. Again, gel would have been preferred, but I'll get by. In some cases, where I'm able to cram a plant into crevices, I do that instead of using glue. It's time to fill the tank really slowly. I use a sponge at the end of my hose which is filled directly from the faucet and that does wonders in preventing water from kicking up substrate and making a mess. After three months things look fabulous. The Monte Carlo is taking a little longer than normal to fill in, otherwise I'm really content. This tank is using strong lighting, CO2, daily fertilization, and heavy filtration. Check the description if you're interested in the equipment or specs. I did 50% water changes every week for the first month and every other week following. Hope you enjoyed watching this. Let me know if you have any questions. And don't forget to subscribe if you learned anything useful. Until next time, see ya!